Hi, in this video I'm going to show you how to build a very basic comparator mirror kit which you can use no matter what your level of confidence to unlock the mysteries of realistic drawing and painting without cheating or tracing anything. I think if this was something that was introduced in classrooms, the whole way we view producing art would be different. Mm -hmm. It's taught me a lot more about myself. I'm mixing the paint, I'm making the colours, I'm changing the way I use my brush strokes, the way I like, you know, make it my own. So what I'm going to share with you today is the basic comparison mirror kit that I used in the first three years of my testing to discover that the comparison mirror can do for art what the calculator did for mathematics. You're going to be able to build this basic setup with things you'll be able to find in your local hardware store if you don't have them lying around the house already. And if the thought of basic DIY strikes fear into your heart, don't worry, I've got you covered. I've had a manufacturer make me components that simplify the whole process and I'll tell you more about that as we go along. So the first thing you will need are two pieces of flat board and I got these from the bargain bin at my local Wix. If you're in America that would be Home Depot I suppose. The next thing I need is a piece of slightly flexible metal rod. You could use a piece of coat hanger here. The other thing I picked up at the hardware store was a drill bit that matches the thickness of this metal rod. So now I'm going to use that drill bit to drill three holes in one of our pieces of board. Two at the back and one at the front and I want to use the two at the back to screw these two pieces of plywood together to create a nice crisp 90 degree angle. And that's only achieved because of those machine cut edges. Thanks Wix. Now I'm gonna take our piece of metal wire and I'm gonna put it into the remaining hole. As an optional extra, I might also glue that into place. And then all I need to think about is the mirror on the end of this boom arm. So, there are some core principles involved here. Firstly, the mirror needs to be at exactly 45 degrees to our source plane. And ideally, the mirror needs to be the same distance from both planes. It's a beautifully simple idea, and let's not forget that we've got Tim Jennison to thank for it. But actually arranging a contraption that will actually do this can be very fiddly and problematic, as many of you have found out. Basically, this beautifully simple idea needs to be beautifully simple to set up. And that work all begins with the basic kit that I'm showing you how to use right now. But this process gets simpler and simpler as we include mass production parts. Now there are two different types of mirror that you can use. This is a conventional domestic mirror. It has the reflective surface on the back side of the sheet of glass, which means that you'll have to contend slightly with that blue-green edge of the piece of glass. And remember, these edges are sharp, so if you're worried about that, please do wear a pair of gloves and be careful. The other kind of mirror you can use is an optical or first surface mirror. This is the kind of mirror that Tim Jennison and myself prefer to use because the reflective surface is on the top side of the sheet of glass. This means that as you look into it, making comparisons between the reflected source image and the marks that you're building up in relation to that underneath it, you have a really nice crisp comparison. There's a big difference in price here. The domestic mirror, 10 to 15 pence. The optical mirror, ordinarily, 20 to 30 pounds, believe it or not. And just to prove it can be done, and because this kit needs to be totally accessible, I'm gonna use the cheaper of our two options here. So I've got a piece of plywood attached to the back of this with some glue and a hole using our drill bit drilled into the back of it, no prizes for guessing where this goes, straight onto the top of our boom arm. And now we have what seems to be a fully functioning comparator mirror kit, although I suspect that when you put your source image on the upright plane, you will find that that image swims around in the mirror. And the reason for this, and the real secret at the heart of the comparator mirror, is that your mirror needs to be at a precise angle to your source image. We're gonna use the flexibility of our metal rod to push back and forth and subtly change the angle of that mirror. Now this has proved to be a really tricky challenge for anyone trying to build their own comparator mirrors over the eight years of my tests. But don't worry, I've had a manufacturer make me some very small, very cheap components that go together with magnets to create a boom arm that clicks into the perfect position every time. That's so much simpler, isn't it? So if you want to get your hands on one of these basic comparator mirror booster packs, 
All you need to do is email us at this address and we will post them straight out to you for no more than the cost of postage and packing. And as if that wasn't enough, we're also going to include in the first 200 of these kits an optical mirror to really optimise your painting process. Now all that remains is to put something to paint on underneath our mirror and enjoy making careful close comparisons between our reflected image and the image that we are building up underneath it. You might not even want to stick to a perfect copy of the reflected image. But the important thing is that you have your subject matter there as an anchor guiding you when you need it and the rest of the time you can make your own decisions as freely as you would if you were painting conventionally. That is the magic source. That's the thing that opens up this skill set and makes realistic drawing and painting possible for everyone. Uh, I think it's perfect for teaching. You get the student to feel what it feels like. It was like an empowerment, honestly. It really felt like I can do this. So over the last couple of years, I've been designing a Comparator Mirror product, an absolutely ideal uh, version of the Comparator Mirror kit. And in that time, I've worried about whether or not I should release a basic version of the kit as I have done today. Judging by my emails, there are about a thousand people who just want to get started with comparator mirror painting and, to be fair, shouldn't have to wait any longer. However, all my research tells me that the only way to bring consistent benefit to high school art classrooms and to the bedrooms of people who don't have much confidence to draw and paint in the long term is to standardise the comparator mirror through mass production. And so two different aims emerge here. There is still a huge amount of room to run a company and to sell a product that makes a healthy profit. But I think to get this idea out there into the world, to really begin a conversation, it needs to be completely accessible. And so that's been the aim of the video today. The last thing I need to tell you is that this is gonna be the last video you see from this particular location. This lovely 18th century barn that I've come to know as my studio over the past 20 years and which perhaps you've come to know as Painting Lab has got to go. However, we are gonna be moving on to a very different set of circumstances. I've been offered the chance to stay and to work at a phenomenal, magical Jacobean manor house. Now, I can't tell you too much about where this house is, but as far as I'm able, I want to invite you into the atmosphere of this magical old house as we unlock the mysteries of drawing and painting together using our comparator mirrors. See you next time.